The TV show Pose has broken barriers, bringing stories to the screen we've never seen and capturing the first Emmy for an openly gay black man. Our guest, Pose creator Stephen Canals, is going to talk about living life to the fullest, bringing those untold stories to the screen and why it's so important to honour the people who fought before us. Now, on Plus Talk. When you love who you are and stay true to yourself, you inspire others to do the same. Ask your healthcare provider if Big Tarvi is right for you, or visit BigTarvi.com to view the important facts, including important warnings. I am joined by the uber-talented, very handsome uh, co-creator, writer, and director of Pose, Stephen Cannells. Thank you so much Thank for you. sitting down with me. This is really cool. You know, we are talking about living our life to the fullest. Do you remember the moment when you allowed yourself to be you and thus maybe live your life to the fullest? That's a great question. I'm going to say, I think, I think it was when I turned 30. And tell us about turning 30 then. Well, up until that point, I'd been working in higher education as a college administrator. And I was spending time behind a desk telling 18 to 23 year olds how to navigate life, how to live their best life. I was counseling them and mentoring them so that, you know, whether they were college freshmen or college seniors, they were getting the most out of their collegiate experience and they were gonna go out into the world and have really meaningful and productive lives. Um, and I just didn't feel like I was doing that myself. I felt like a fraud. Right. And something about turning 30, something just shifted on its axis for me and I realized, you know, you need to be doing the same thing for yourself. Take and, your own advice. And you are now, and you're having great success with it. Um, but can I say though? Yeah. I do think that I don't. It's interesting. I feel like I'm still on the journey. I'm happy. I get that though. I'm living and I'm and I'm loving life. But the reality is, like, I think that there's still so much more for me to learn. But isn't that about live? That's what kind of maybe living life to your fullest is about. That you're living in that moment to your fullest potential then. But perhaps you kind of get there and you go, wait, hang on, I've got so much more to give, or I've got a little bit more to give, or I could give more in this direction. Yeah. And then that takes you on to the next sort of course of, of where life takes you. Absolutely. I think that culturally though, like we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to be at a place where, like we, everyone wants to be the best, right. right? And on the surface, everyone wants to be able to say, you know, I'm living my life to the fullest, yeah. and it is wonderful, and it's happy, and especially with social media. Absolutely, right? We did everything on social media. <laughs> my life is perfect, and yes. then reality. I'm rocking myself to sleep yeah. every night. <laughs> exactly. And I want to talk about Pose for a second mm. um, because congratulations. Thanks. You know I'm a, like a super fan on this show. I'm, I'm <laughs> tweeting. I'm, I'm like I that. we text back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, where did the idea come from? Let's just revisit some of that for a bit. When I was in college, I had a professor who introduced me to the balls, um, and I was able to screen Paris is Burning, and it just changed my life. You know, I think up until that point, I really hadn't seen that many positive representations of queer people of, or trans people of color. Mm -hmm. Actually, to be honest with you, I don't know that I'd seen any representation right. of queer trans people of color. And I would say that I think up until Pose, most of this country probably has not seen representations. Fair, fair. Um, so that in itself was revolutionary. I also wasn't out at the time that I saw the documentary for the first time. And so, the, you know, knowing that this incredibly resilient and brave community existed in New York, specifically in Harlem, which is where my parents were raised, um, in the 80s, in the midst of both the crack and AIDS epidemics, um, and somehow managed to still create family and live, live their lives to the fullest, was so remarkable to me. And I just remember feeling, I just took a lot of strength from their strength. And the truth is, you know, the impetus to finally step into my authentic self and come out really came from the strength that I received watching that documentary from the ballroom community. You said in an, uh, in an interview I read, you said that Pose is not only a way to highlight a particular experience that black, brown, queer, and trans people were having, but also a way to say thank you mm. to those communities. Elaborate on that for me a little bit. Well, I think the truth is that 
you and I as members of the LGBT community, like we have the privilege to be here right now, you know, to be having a conversation on camera about what it means to be part of this community because of the incredible work of our, you know, forebears. And the fact of the matter is that like we stand on the shoulders of giants, yeah. you know, the folks who were living in their truth well before Stonewall and all of the folks who fought and continue to fight for our rights during and, and post Stonewall. And so that isn't lost on me. Tell me about your directing. Of uh, You did the episode uh, Revelations. Mm -hmm. What was that experience like? Really special for me because it's one of the first times in a really long time that we are seeing two black men make love on you know cable TV um, and these are two black men who also happen to be living with HIV and you know that was really it was important for me because I feel really strongly that we need to you know remove the stigma around what it means to be HIV positive and so to have an opportunity to aid in telling that story and sharing that with the world was, was really special. I want to get into the HIV as I call it kind of a character in itself in a mm -hmm. minute but going into Pose I mean, you mentioned earlier about Harlem and, and growing up around the balls but what did you know about what did you know about HIV? Did you know about undetectable equals untransmittable? How educated and up to speed were you and how much further along the line are you now? Yeah well I mean the first time I remember discovering or knowing what HIV is, I was six years old, I was in first grade, um, and I remember being told if one of your classmates is bleeding, make sure that you go and you get someone, like ask for help, don't, you don't help them. And I remember that being really incongruent to what I was told, you know, my mom is also a teacher and, and one of the things that I was always brought up with is if someone's hurt, then you come, come to their aid, you know, you, you assist them. So I remember being really confused by that and having to have a conversation about what's going on and, and being told, you know, there's, there's this disease and, you know, it's, it lives in blood and you have to be really careful and being really confused by that. I, you know, as a, a man living with HIV, I know I've said this to you off camera and separately. I, mm -hmm. I, I'm so grateful for the way you and and your cast and your crew presented HIV because mm -hmm. it is in itself a character in Pose. Mm -hmm. But what you guys have done is you have represented and presented HIV in a way that does away with the typical scaremongering and fear tactics and shocking stigmatization of it. But you have still held true to the devastating shock that this disease was causing at the time when Pose was set, season one in the 80s, season two in the 90s. You haven't taken away from it, you've, you've humanized it. When it comes specifically to telling truthful stories around living with HIV, I would be remiss if I didn't say that Our Lady J, who is a writer and producer in our writer's room, is living with HIV. You know, and as a woman with HIV, you know, she has contributed so much to the narrative. She's really been so honest in our writer's room about her journey. Yeah. And so she's such a huge part of why I think that particular narrative on our show feels so real and feels um, truthful and authentic. How do you strike that balance of keeping it entertaining, but also being sensitive to the topic um, whether it be the HIV topic mm -hmm. or the trans topic mm -hmm. or any of the other you know issues that you guys address so well in pose. Oh, it's 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 tricky. <laughs> it's a tightrope that we're walking on our show. But I mean, I think again, it's we all spend so much time just talking about our own experiences and our own lives, you know. And again, it the reality is that particularly for the incredible individuals who are part of the ballroom community in the 80s who are our consultants. You know, the late grandfather Hector Extravaganza and Jose Extravaganza, um, just to name a few. You know, so many of their stories were about the love and the family and the community that they built in the face of, 
you know, poverty and violence and 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 living with HIV. And so I think what's what's our responsibility, my responsibility as a storyteller, is just to present all of it. Yeah. You know, and I think that more often than not, the reason why Post it seems so revolutionary to so many is that more often than not, our stories are always doom and gloom, right? Yeah. If you look at historically, specifically HIV narratives in film and television, it's always a death sentence. But what do you want to say to somebody who maybe is standing in the shadows and watches this via their smartphone in a country where they're terrified to speak out, but they see this conversation. What would you say to them about living your true self, living life to the fullest? To continue to pursue your passion, you know, find your tribe. You know, the message of Pose is about family and resilience and, and um, community, and so, Go out into the world and find the people who are going to continue to love you and continue to support you. Know that you are deserving of love, you know, and that you deserve to live a full and happy life. Stephen Canos, you're the best. I can't wait for season three of Pose. <laughs> Very exciting. Thank you. Thank you.